Okay. We're here. All right. So tonight uh, I'll be reading from uh, a paper from Barry Popkins. Popkin um, from 1993. And um, his paper is titled Nutritional Patterns and Transitions. So I'm going to jump right in and see how much of the paper we get through. All right, so I'm pulling it up. All right, so page or the paper starts. All right, uh, the pace of dietary change has accelerated to varying degrees in different regions of the world. All right. So recognizing, I'm adding in my own words, uh, which I probably just will do. Um, recognizing broad changes in dietary patterns and exploring their relationships uh, with economic, social, demographic, and health factors will improve our understanding of the causes and the consequences of dietary change. Uh, in which in turn will help us understand how to promote healthy full dietary um, change systematically. Um, in this article, or this article rather, <laughs> provides a heuristic framework. Heuristic, I don't know what that word means. You know what that word means? Um, let's write it down. H -E R I S T I C heuristic. All right, the definition heuristic is involving or serving as an aid. Okay, aid of learning, aid of discovery, problem solving. Okay, so the article probably basically an aid in. A, learning, discovery, um, education. Um, so heuristic framework that accommodates the dynamic nature of diet. Um, the um wasn't in there. The, di the dynamic nature of diet and the relationship of diet with other aspects of society. All right. So that is the setup. All right, so two historic processes of change uh, clearly affect, change clearly affect and are affected by nutritional change. All right, one is demographic transition. So the idea of this is the shift from a pattern of one of high fertility and high mortality to one of a low fertility and low mortality. Um, and, and this typically happens, I'm summarizing, typically happens in modern industrialized countries, even more directly uh, relevant in the epidemiological transition, first described by Omar in the 70s, um, the shift from the pattern of high prevalence of infectious disease associated with malnutrition an infectious disease associated with malnutrition. Okay. Um, and with periodic famine and poor environmental sanitation. I think more poor san environmental sanitation. Uh, I guess with all three factors, malnutrition uh, combined, uh, maybe a combination, and with periodic famine and poor environmental sanitation. I get it. Makes sense to a pattern of high prevalence of chronic. So then it, first it was the malnutrition, famine, and um, envir envir environmental sanitation, that combination to now, uh, which is the prevalence of chronic and degenerative um, diseases associated with urban um, industrial lifestyles, which is where we're at now. 
we as in the um, in the U.S. because that's where I'm at. That's where I am. Um, a third pattern of delayed degener degenerative um, disease has been formulated uh, more recently. Um, accompanying this progression is a major shift in the age-specific mortality patterns and a consequent increase in life expectancy. Interpretations of the demographic and epidemiological trans transitions share a focus on the ways in which populations move from one pattern to the next. Similarly, large shifts have occurred in the composition um, of diet. These dietary changes are reflected in nutritional outcomes, such as the changes in average statute, stature and body comp composition. Okay. So basically, as we um, are industrialized, or be um, this um, transition they're describing as demographic transition, which happens in a lot of um, industrialized countries, like our like the U.S. Um, so we go from our stature changes. So we go from, I guess, what's quoted to be average um, stature and body composition that changes. And I'm going to go ahead and probably guess that the changes, it goes from like a more slender to a more robust uh, body composition and increased, or if I'm speaking in terms of nutritional dietetics, um, BMI, the BMI is much, um, much larger. So where was I? Modern societies seem to be converging on a pattern of a diet high in saturated fat, um, sugar, and refined foods, and low in fiber. And this is termed the Western diet. So the Western diet is consists mainly of high saturated fat, that's like heavy meats and beef and um, chicken and I think also more red meat. And then sugar, everything sugar, um, cakes, cookies, candies, honey buns, uh, all the things people eat. Um, sugar and even bread, um, white bread. Well, that's also more ref refined foods. So it's refined foods, um, breads or white breads, and low in fiber. So not enough vegetables, not enough fruits, um, with skin. All right, so where am I? Hmm, Western diet. Many consider this dietary pattern to be associated with high levels of chronic and degenerative disease and with reduced disability-free um, time. Interesting. All right, Committee on Diet and, oh wait, that's a, just a footnote. So my purpose here, what's your purpose, Popkin? Um, your purpose here, my purpose here, is to briefly to describe, um, is briefly to describe the dietary and health changes taking place and to outline policy adjustments that could help generate desirable nutritional change, notably in the developing world. So he says he's gonna basically outline what changes have happened over time, what are they, and outline some po policy adjustments that could help, so this is, Sounds like some proposed policy adjustments, like Colbert is going to tell us what could be done and what does he think can be done to help um, change in developing countries. All right, so next section 
is titled Nutritional Transitions. So we talk about the demographic Trans yeah, demographic transitions. Um, now going into what's outlined as nutritional transitions. Um, which probably outlines the dietary and health changes. Yeah, we'll see. All right, so nutritional transitions. Five broad nutrition patterns are summarized in table one. Uh, okay. I see it. Um, they are not restricted to a particular periods of human history. For convenience, the patterns are outlined as historical developments. However, earlier patterns are not restricted to the periods in which they first arose, but continue to characterize certain geographic and socioeconomic um, subpopulations. All right, so. Barry goes into the five patterns, first being collecting food. All right, so the diet which characterized hunter gathering populations, or this diet, meaning hunter collecting food, um, which characterized hunter gatherers gathering populations high in carbohydrates and fiber and low in fat especially saturated fat. In the wild animal meat, in the wild animal meat consumed, the proportion proportion of polysaturated fat is significantly significantly higher than the modern domesticated animal meat. Hmm. So pattern two is famine. The diet becomes much less varied and is subject to larger variations and periods of acute scarcity of food. The, these diet changes are hypothesized to be associated with nutritional stress and a reduction in stature. So you get to, you become smaller obviously during famine and don't have much variation as far as what you can eat. During the later phase, phases of this pattern, the famine pattern, social stratification begins to appear and dietary variation according to gender and social status increase. The pattern of famine, as with each the patterns has varied over time and space, meaning all these patterns have changed at some point. Some civilizations are more successful than others in alleviating famine and chronic hunger, at least for more privileged citizens. All right, so the pattern number three, reading uh, receding famine. Receding famine, the consumption of fruits, veggies, and animal protein increases. And starchy staples become less important in, in, in the diet. Many early civilizations made great progress in reducing chronic hunger and famine and famines but only in the last third of this millennium have these changes been widespread, leading to marked shifts in diet. However, famines continued well into the 18th century in portions of Europe and remain common in some regions of the world. Pattern number four, degenerative, de degenerative diseases. A diet high in total fat, Cholesterol, sugar, and other refined carbohydrates, and low in polysaturated fatty acids and fiber. Sounds like the Western diet. Um, often accompanied by increasingly sedentary life. So, um, is characterized of 
most high income societies, really, uh, resulting in increased prevalence of obesity and contributing to the de degenerative diseases that characterize Omaran's final um, epidemiological stage. Who's Omaran's? We'll check. Where's my pen? O-M-A. O-M-R. A-N. Omara. All right. Pattern number five. Pattern number five. Behavior change. A new diet dietary pattern appears to be emerging as a result of changes in diet evidently associated with uh, the desire to prevent or delay degenerative diseases and prolong health. Whether these, yeah, whether these, it's a chart in the way, whether these changes instituted in some countries by consumers and in others also pro prodded by government policy will continue a large scale transition in dietary structure and body composition remains to be seen. Right. All right, if such a new dietary pattern takes hold, it may be very important in enhancing successful aging. Yes. Um, that is a postponing, um, infirmity and increasing disability free expectance. Uh, did I say that right? Disability, there's no continuation. Oh yes, disability free expectancy. I guess as you age, I guess disabilities, it, I mean, it could be like losing eyesight and things like that and being able to walk. So some more credits after that. All right, so that's interesting. The last um, last pattern, behavioral um, change, seems like that's more intentional and um, intentional to, I guess this population or this group of people are choosing to um, change their diet in a way that prevents um, not prevents, um, but prevents, <laughs> prevents, um, oh wait, I found that funny. Um, prevents one from uh, obesity, prevents one from degenerative disease, chronic disease, things like that. All right, so I wonder if I should read the next or stop here. Let's go. I'll stop here for now. All right. And then continue with part two. Good night.